DM James here, uh, and tonight we're going to have a little bit of a review about a game I think everyone should look into called Dungeon World. Now, Dungeon World comes soft uh, paperback. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a hardback. I got the paperback. This is a all-inclusive game. You don't need anything else but a couple of dice. The the um, system works on challenges where if you roll greater than a number, things are cool and awesome for you. If you roll less than that number, then things are medium for you and medium for the monster too. And if you really shank it, then things are great for the monster or whatever and they suck for you. An example would be a thief picking a lock. If the thief needs to roll a 7 to pick the lock and he rolls a 5, the lock is still picked, but the GM has the option of uh, doing what's called a move or a maneuver and saying that maybe some kobolds were down the hall and they heard the thief, you know, messing around with the lock and now they're on their way to check out what's going on. The setup of the book is, is wonderful. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of color art, but the art that is in it is very flavorful, and it reflects the game very well. I mean, there's one with like a dwarf priest with a hammer, and he's casting a cleric spell, and he's got like glowing wings off of his back and, and everything, and it's, it's just really nice stuff. There's alignments as normal. And a list of maneuvers the players can perform, as well as a list of the maneuvers the GM can perform. There's a good spell list, you know, see through time and all that. There's a, the chapter on how to run the game. It may not be the biggest chapter of, of uh, the sort that you've ever read, but it gets the job done. I mean, it, it, it really does. The uh, GM information is just great. The way they set, they tell you to set up a campaign with two dangers and some grim portents. I mean, they map it all out. Uh, uh, what they call fronts. Uh, just very cool. Very cool way of doing things. Uh, something I'm thinking about stealing for use in my homebrew. The monster section, I stole in my homebrew. So if the people who, uh, if Mr. Latora and Koble ever listen to this, I love the way you set your monster manual up so much that I stole the, the idea and I do it myself in my homebrew. And what I mean by that is they divide the monsters up into the locales where the monsters would live. So if you're trying to find a monster to throw out your opponents and or your opponents, so listen at me, the players, and they're in a swamp, you just go to the swamp section and throw some froglings at them, some froglocks or whatever. If you're if they're in the deep under earth, you just go to the deep under earth part, you know? The deep dark or whatever it's called. And then uh deep earth actually, and then throw that at them. Combat is one roll, so if you and a goblin are fighting, you don't roll and then hit or miss, and then the goblin roll and hit or miss. There's one roll, and you can both take damage. And that's kind of that was kind of strange the first time I read it, but now I like it. Other things that are different from D&D is when you sit down and you make your characters, you're all expected to make your characters together. And no, you cannot have two of the same class. Then you check off little things on, on the character sheet and, uh, to kind of customize your character class. And then you create a bond with other characters. And these bonds play out in the game. Like, if your bond is to protect the elven wizard and you do protect the elven wizard, you get an advantage and, you know, you could go up levels and things of that nature. Um, the back of the book is dominated by just page after page of lists of people who supported these guys on the Kickstarter. Very cool. 
Very cool. If you supported them on the Kickstarter, they your name's in the book. I'm I'm assuming, unless they miss somebody. But um, and then in the back is an index. I rate this game about seven and a half out of ten. It's a good game. If I were not running the game that I wrote, which I wrote specifically for my group, uh, mainly actually, I've I've got an older player who plays, and when we play p played Pathfinder or or Labyrinth Lord, she would always get the dice confused. She's sixty four, and uh, she's my mother. So anyway. Um, She'd always get the dice confused, and she'd always have to ask which one, and then it, she just felt bad, like she couldn't remember, and, you know, the shapes and all this and that. So, when I wrote my homebrew game, it only uses one die. So, when we're sitting at the table, and there's a pile of dice, they're all die 20. And the game works effectively as a... Um, it's a skill-based game, so there are no classes. And I know that has nothing to do with the dungeon world, and I'm not trying to pitch my game because I'm not trying to sell it. It's just something I run around here. Uh, going back to that, it is my opinion that pretty much every role player is intelligent enough to make their own game. I know that might piss Wizards of the Coast off if they heard me saying it, but it is a reality. Every every D and D player could make their own game. It's not that hard. It, I mean, I'm you know, I was a firefighter, and if I could figure it out, then anybody could. So I'm going to end that ramble right there. Giving the game seven and a half. For my next review, I'll probably go back to you know something I'm more comfortable with, which is Traveler. Love me some Traveler. And we'll talk about it. I might make a character uh, and record myself making the character. And we'll see what kind of character we can create. Um, until that time, peace out. Roll those high, die, those high die rolls. Unless you're playing a game that requires low die rolls. Like original Top Secret. And uh, good gaming. Thank the Patriarchy because without the Patriarchy... None of this would be possible. Take care. James out.